Hi, I'm Deja. Welcome to our session today. Really excited to be here, as I'm sure you've heard everyone say on stage. <laughs> Hope you're all excited as well. Uh, so today, this is our session about uh, driving engagement and increasing conversions with two-way. And just to give you some context of why we curated this, a lot of our customers have seen amazing results. So we wanted to create a forum to, of course, shout some of them out and then also give you the expertise so you can adopt these strategies for yourself. So before we get started, I'm going to introduce some, myself and some of our speakers. I'm Deja. Again, I'm on the product marketing team at Attentive, and I lead our um, positioning for our messaging products and conversational products. And then next, we'll have Kevin join us on stage. He's one of our senior client strategy directors. He is in charge of making sure all of our concierge clients are seeing success with conversational SMS. And then next, we have Esther, who is our uh, customer insight senior associate at Clove. And she is in charge of making sure, amongst many things, but making sure that she's intaking customer feedback and implementing that across all the things that Clove does. And then finally, we have Kizzy from Igloo, who is the digital user experience director, and she leads their growth strategy for uh, their direct-to-consumer business. All right, so to give you a quick run of the show, first we're going to get into why you should be considering and investing in conversational SMS, and then go through some quick examples and high-level use cases on other clients doing this in the world today, followed by a live demo, and then next we'll shift over to talk to our fabulous clients and get into how they're scaling conversations and tailoring the experience uh, with some best practices, and then we'll wrap up with Q&A. All right, so let's first talk about engagement. This is a really key metric uh, when measuring the success of any campaign or content that you're putting out in the world. So when you're thinking about investing in conversational SMS, you should consider how you're engaging your clients today. And I, as we talk to brands and customers, engagement is one of the more difficult or more, more challenging parts of the marketing strategy. And really, we found that people that do invest in this are seeing really great results. So if you look at your strategy today, if you're here, you're definitely engaging your customers, but you're probably mostly doing it with one-way tactics, which is fine. It's, it's a solid foundational strategy, but you're uh, not encouraging your customers to engage with you directly. And then when they are, you don't really have a scalable way to respond to those inquiries. Um, and then you're probably noticing this theme across all of your marketing channels. So you're most definitely sending marketing emails, but maybe nobody's monitoring that inbox or you're using a no reply alias so people aren't really encouraged to engage with your content. And then maybe you even have live chat on your website, but it's mostly built for desktop users and not really optimized for your mobile consumer. And then you most definitely have a dedicated support email, but it probably takes you like two to five business days to uh, respond and resolve an inquiry. So having an omni-channel uh, strategy is great, but there's a huge untapped opportunity with text message. So we did a little research to see uh, what channels people prefer to engage with brands on, and we found that 70% of customers want to engage with you over text, but really only 35% of customers are actually able to engage that way with their brands. And I know, personally, when I was first introduced to conversational marketing, we tend to think about it in terms of phone, um, maybe social media, but really texting is poised to really fulfill this need for customers. So then we dug a little bit deeper, even into just channel aside, what do people expect from you as a brand? And more than half said they wanted two-way communication, but not only that, the modern customer also would like those, that interaction to be fast from a real person, and also they want it to be easily accessible. And again, texting is the way to do this, and so not only a scalable way, but also just a more meaningful and memorable way. So just to double down on that point, so you know I mean business, we found that our own customers that do get this right with the attentive features, uh, their customers are not only more will, uh, likely to buy again, but they also spend up to 50% more. And I know as a marketer, I might be a little bit biased, but when I hear something that's gonna drive retention and improve my ROI, I'm like, yes, I needed this information like three weeks ago. <laughs> SMS was always meant to be personal. Uh, it's on your phone, you know, you talk to your family, your friends, your loved ones. And we really need to start thinking about how we can communicate with consumers as a friend and less as a business. 
And like I mentioned earlier, one-way tactics have really like laid a solid foundation for how we communicate with, with subscribers, but really conversational marketing is meant to create a more personalized, engaging experience, and that is really favored by two-way tactics. So today, we hope that you come away with uh, some strategies to help you build a more customer-centric experience and drive more personalized engagement. So before I pass it off, just give you some foundational knowledge on our offerings in the conversational side. We have a people-powered end and an automated side. So first, self-serve replies. This is something that's part of our core offering. You can really get in the UI and do that today by jumping in the conversations inbox or setting up a CX integration to reroute those uh, replies to your CX team. Uh, it's if you just want to get your feet wet and kind of dabble and maybe see how your subscribers respond, you say you have a launch and you want to do like a gamified, quick uh, scavenger hunt style, or even just have someone guess the, maybe the name of your next coming product, you can jump in there and do that today. It doesn't really increase the capacity of which you can have conversational uh, or support conversational marketing, but it's a good, good way to just test the waters. Next, we have two-way journeys, which I'm sure you've heard a lot about at these other sessions. This is a great way. Uh, to like also automate answers to simple questions using keywords and programmatic apply, replies. So how you set this up, you uh, prompt a subscriber using keywords or numbers and then map automated replies to those. And this is a really great way to start relieving the burden from your, uh, your client support team and also collect preferences like uh, say, I, I, we'll see this actually later, so I won't spoil it for you. <laughs> And then finally, we have Attentive Concierge, which I know you've heard a lot about. Uh, this is our premier product to help you scale conversations. And this is the people-powered replies are the best way to make sure that you're constantly engaged with your client, with your subscribers, and that there are no person is getting left on red, which I don't know if that's ever happened to any of you, but I'm not a fan of being ghosted, and we shouldn't do that to our customers either. <laughs> And I would be remiss to not talk about our latest innovation. We're always building new things to help you drive engagement and also grow your subscriber list. So I'm very proud to introduce that we have Live SMS, which is a new way for brands to engage their on-site visitors with real-time conversations, but also not just focusing on engagement. It also helps you acquire new customers without cutting into your margins using offers. Uh, we will also talk more about this later, so I also won't spoil it, but this is one of my, the features I'm most excited about on the concierge side. And on that note, I will pass it to Kevin. <laughs> hey everyone. Thanks so much for coming to our session today. Uh, again, I'm Kevin Elliott. I'm the Senior Director of Client Strategy for our concierge product. And I'm super excited to talk to you about how some of our clients have started to incorporate conversational into their SMS program, start to drive incremental revenue, and increase their customer experience. Personally, I think the SMS program, or the SMS platform, or marketing channel is extremely powerful. My assumption is you all do too, or you wouldn't be here. But when I think about the future of SMS, I think that as a channel where it's about interacting, it's about engagement. It's a place where brands and consumers should be able to have one-to-one -one interactions in conversations. It should be more than just a marketing channel. So I'm extremely to share a couple examples of how our clients have used it, and then I'll introduce a couple of our awesome clients to the left here as well. So let's dive in a little bit. So Zales is really interesting how they've done this. They use our automated conversational flows to create a three multiple choice sequence where the questions are, who are you shopping for, him or her? What type of products are you looking for? Is there a specific category? And what is the price point you're looking for? Now, those questions will get more engagement as somebody goes through this funnel. At the bottom, the last question, they had a 75% reply rate, incredible engagement. At the end, they'd received a link to a curated list of products based off of how the subscriber responded. That link, because it was personalized and somebody wanted the results because they've been so engaged, had a 80% click-through rate. Clove did something similar, I think they're gonna mention it too, but she actually verified that those numbers weren't a lie, which was great, so Esther can confirm that later for me. But it's about creating that true personalized experience. Now, Mama Fuko took a different approach, but still use automated conversational. They wanted to learn about how the consumers wanted us to engage with them. They asked, how frequently do you want to hear from us? 
That type of approach will allow a marketer to create segments based off of how frequently somebody wants to be heard, wants to hear from the brand, drastically reducing opt-out rates, but also building brand affinity and loyalty. If, if you're actually listening to your consumers and you know that, yeah, consumers are going to really like your brand. It's a different type of experience that they might not have had before. To take a personal experience a little bit deeper, I'm going to talk about We Wore What. Now, We Wore What uses a combination of attentive concierge, our people-powered messaging platform, along with our site visitor journey. It works in two phases. The first phase is an automated message that they're going to receive that comes from their persona, Sarah, so it feels like it's coming from a human. And there's a question at the end. It can be something as simple as, are there any questions I can answer for you? Right? Now, once someone replies, the well-trained concierge agents can step in and actually answer any questions using their dynamic knowledge base, taking that customer all the way through the entire purchase process and helping them feel very confident in their purchase. That one-to-one -one interaction is something that is really difficult to scale, as Deja mentioned. But with attentive concierge, it's absolutely possible. Now, this type of experience might remind you, it reminds me anyways, of a high-end retail store. Right? When you walk into a high-end retail store, you're greeted by a well-trained sales associate that starts to ask a couple of questions. Start by, how's your day going? What are you looking for? Is there something I can help with? Are you looking for a specific event? Talk about your style, your size. And by the end of this, they're making recommendations that are perfect. You make the purchase and you walk out of the store with absolute confidence. No buyer's remorse. You can't wait to get home and you're extremely happy. We can now do that in the digital channel on your e-commerce sites, create that same experience by engaging one-on-one -on -one and taking them through that purchase process. That type of experience works very well when your products might need some type of recommendations or guidance. It could be around size, it could be around fit. But I, a lot of time, think about beauty and cosmetics. Not that I'm a constant shopper, but in reality, people have a lot of questions about skin tones and shade matching and what type of foundation and things like that, from what I understand. Now, Mented, uses concierge in a similar way to we were what? They use the site visitor journey. So we will actually text them while they're still on site. But they also, they also use it for abandoned cart. Now, my assumption is a lot of you have an abandoned cart journey. A lot of you probably offer a discount code there too, and you should, right? It's a great tactic to make sure we can convert more people. Some subscribers almost expect it, so they might abandon just to get that discount. But what about the people that have questions? What if there's an actual objection or hesitation? What if I'm not sure about what size? which I'm not sure about what shade. What if we could actually answer those questions? So Mented does this, uses concierge in their abandoned cart journey with their persona, Ava. So when somebody abandons a cart, they get a message from Ava saying, hey, I see you this behind. Are there any questions I can answer about this? Can I help you through the buying process somehow? It's an amazing experience, that personal touch that, again, difficult to do at scale. Now, Mented also likes our conversational so much through concierge that they've also implemented live SMS. So we actually take a lot of their actual on-site support for their mobile visitors, and we take that support workload off of their team. Our concierge agents help that, drive subscribers, drive revenue, reduce workloads for your customer support team. It's a win-win for everyone. Now, in my role as Senior Director of Client Strategy, my whole mission is to make sure that all of your brands and all the brands that we meet can build these awesome interactions, something different than what you might get in other SMS platforms. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of a demo, real quick, just in terms of how you might build this in your attentive UI. So I'm going to start by introducing you to Katie, which I think her name was Jessica on the demo this morning, but I think it's the same picture, but it's Katie. Now, she's the type of shopper that I want to target. Okay. Katie's on my site, Bonnie Beauty. She's looking at the stick in buttermilk. So I'm confident that she's interested in the stick, but I want to be 100% confident. I want to be absolutely confident in what she's interested in and what her preferences might be. So I'm going to do something new. I'm going to ask her. I'm going to create a site visitor journey that opens up with automated conversational, simply asking, I see you're on a site looking at these products. Can you tell me a little bit more about what you're looking for today? Are you looking for skincare, makeup, hair care products? And this message is going to go out, as I mentioned, about one minute after she arrived on the site. Average time on site for me is about three and a half to four minutes. Perfect, she should still be on the site. Now, once she gets that message that I mentioned, she's gonna have that opportunity to reply with one of these options. Makeup, hair, skincare. Once she replies with makeup, I now have that custom attribute. 
a capture profile, so I can use that for segmentation for my future marketing, so I can send more targeted campaigns that can drive more ROI, or higher ROI, so more conversions at a lower cost. But also, I'm going to take this opportunity to send her a personalized message, because I know what she's interested in. It's going to have different product recommendations. I can say, hey, I'm glad you're interested in makeup. We're actually having a promotion that's going to be available for the next week. I highly recommend this product, wherever you'd like but tailored to what you know she's interested in, because it's zero-party data, she told you it's what she's interested in. We're also going to introduce Sarah, the concierge agent. Sarah can answer any questions while she's on the site browsing, make sure she's confident in that purchase, just like the high-end retail that I mentioned. But also, she now knows she can always text this number back and talk to Sarah throughout the entire buying journey. She now has this personal shopping assistant at any point. She can always text back. Now, once people start to reply at scale, you can imagine it's kind of a tough thing to monitor. I mean, you won't want to sit there and actually watch every conversation. So I'm going to show you how you can do it in the attentive UI. You might be familiar with the inbox and the conversations tab. But there's so many conversations that are coming through. Some of these are concierge, some of them aren't. And I want to make sure I can hone in on exactly what I'm looking for. So I can filter by concierge conversation. I can also filter by concierge conversion, which means I can look at the conversations that specifically drove sales for me, if that's where I want to hone into. Now, I'm going to hone in on some of these concierge conversations. You're going to see on the left on the list of conversations that now they have a black bell. That is the concierge emblem, so you know that those are, those are conversations handled by concierge. On the right, you'll also see that the reply has the bell to the right. Now, this is a reply from one of our concierge agents, about a two-minute response time. Pretty happy with that. That's pretty awesome. I also love the tone. It's right on brand for me. I'm really excited about it. I want to make sure I can tell them. So I can click Give Feedback right underneath the message, and I can say, hey, good response, poor response too. You are able to coach the agents because we do want to become an extension of your team. But I can say this is a great response because I like the tone. I can categorize it and categorize this by tone. I can also leave a note. This is where I can add more detail, do more of this, do less of this, deep, do less of this. Make sure that, again, I can coach the agents to be an extension of my customer support team at scale. Now, also, as I start to review more and more conversations, I might have missed a message. So anytime you give feedback, it is marked on that message. So if I haven't seen it in a while, I'm like, what did I say about this one again? I can click in and view that as well. Now, once you start giving feedback, most of our clients will give maybe 10 to 15 minutes a week. It's not meant to be a full-time job. A little coaching, a little guidance goes a really long way. But in terms of navigating this at scale, how am I going to actually monitor this in the platform? So once you have concierge activated, you will have your own concierge section in the conversations tab. You will also be able to look at all of your feedback at once. So this is a list of all the feedback that I've ever given. I can click into it to see a little bit more information if I want. I can see that there was action taken on it, what the status is, when I gave the feedback, and when it was resolved. But creating a good experience and giving feedback is important, but I also want to customize this more at the, voice, the brand voice level. I really want to customize how the agents are engaging. So I can go to tone management, where I can do a lot of interesting things, and we're always rolling out more ways to customize the experience. Today, you can tell the agents to send emojis, to not send emojis. You can tell emojis which ones to block, if you like. You can change your persona. Sarah is probably the most common persona, but you can pick whatever you'd like for your persona that fits your brand. You can also select your tone. So I have casual selected here. I could select professional or formal, depending on what I'm seeing in the conversations, to make sure I can align how the agents are talking to my customers to be better in line with my own brand voice. Now, to scroll down, you can see a lot of options here. There's even a block list. So if you were to block certain phrases, certain keywords, anytime an agent goes to send a message, one of those will automatically block it. The agent will be asked to rewrite it or fix the error, and then they'll be able to send it. Now, creating the best experience is vital to the success of concierge. Our concierge CSMs and your attentive CSMs will help you create this. Um, it is our role, and we're really good at it. But I also want to make sure that this is performing for me. So if I go to the overview in the concierge section, I now can see performance highlights, where I can see the three most important KPIs for me. I can see the total, num the total amount of revenue that concierge has driven for me. That's not in the automated messages. That is once a subscriber replies and starts engaging with a concierge agent, those are the dollars that I'm getting. And compare that to the previous period. Concierge conversion rate, how many of those conversations are turning into an actual sale, and total conversations handled. So how is impacting my customer support? How much time and effort am I saving them? Also down below, you see view your performance reports. 
you were to click on that link, it will take you to the reports library, where there's a number of reports that are constantly rolling out. And I think we learned a little bit more about being able to customize reports this morning. So a lot of that will be coming out as well. But really exciting stuff, so you can always monitor how Concierge is performing for you. Now, I'm really happy with the performance. I want to do more with Concierge. How can I leverage Concierge in more places? Just a little bit further down on the page, we have Concierge Next Steps, which are recommended next, next actions to help you all get a little bit more out of Concierge. Again, you can talk to your CSM, more than happy to help. But we do have a lot of content here that will also help. You might want to add live SMS. Or maybe you're looking for inspiration of, of a conversational campaign that you can send. Or what type of journey you might want to optimize. As I scroll down a little bit further, we get a little bit more granular, where you will actually see which active journeys do you have that could be optimized for conversational. We could start using an agent persona. We start asking a question at the end to start engaging. Or new journey opportunities, something like site visitor, something that you might not have enabled that you're really interested in to try out. All those recommendations will be here. Now, my hope is that I've given you a couple ideas in how you might be able to leverage conversational, whether it's about using the automated two-way conversational to collect valuable insights about your customers and start to engage them one-on-one -on -one by creating the customer attributes and segmenting, or whether it's about using concierge, making sure we can scale that true one-to-one -one conversational experience that is really difficult to handle internally, because we're going to have a proactive outreach strategy here. It's going to be an amazing way to drive an awesome experience and help drive more sales for you. Now, I'm sure you can listen to me all day about how great we are and about all the conversational examples I have. But I really want to welcome a couple of our awesome customers up here that have great experience with concierge. So first, I'm going to welcome Esther from Clove, who manages customer insights. Esther, I do customer insights at Clove. Um, and Clove is a sneaker, a modern sneaker design for those on the front lines of healthcare. So the idea um, came out of our founder, Joe, watching his wife, Tamara, who's a nurse, um, go through her early nursing career, unable to find a shoe that fit all of her needs, um, which he found to be pretty surprising. Uh, so Clove is a sneaker that is durable and comfortable and easy to clean, and we hope pretty cute. You can make the judgment yourself. I'm wearing them. Um, and the motto at Clove is um, you support them, we support you. So it's really simple. We have devoted ourselves to supporting those who devote their lives to supporting others. Um, and that's really why conversational was of interest to us. We want to support our customers however we can, wherever we can. Um, and text is obviously a channel that everyone is using all the time in their daily life. So we wanted to support them there as well. Um, I will say, before Concierge was even a glimmer in the eye of Attentive, we actually ran a little experiment with Concierge. Uh, my very first week at Clove, we released a new colorway called Powder Blue. Uh, and a couple of hours before we launched it, we decided that we were going to do a guess the name contest via Attentive. So we sent out a text with a picture of the shoe and said, guess the name and you'll get a discount. And the response was overwhelming. I was in the inbox, single-handedly, replying to people's guesses, prompting more, giving people clues, um, answering product questions, sending them product links. Uh, my favorite guess was Ice Ice Baby. I think that's a great shoe colorway name. Um, but we saw that there was a real appetite to text us and have us text them back. Um, and our customers were super engaged with that channel. The very first way that we worked with Conversational was through one of these automated quizzes. Um, we kept it really simple and did it as part of our welcome journey. So essentially, people would sign up for SMS. They would get all the standard welcome stuff. And then um, we sent them a quiz to try to find their perfect color. Um, and in classic clove fashion, we kept it pretty playful. We asked people their preferred um, coffee or their preferred uh, ice cream, because you should always be A-B testing. Um, and once they responded, we sent them a color recommendation for one of our core colors. This was a great way to intro conversational, because first of all, it established that when we texted our customers and they texted us back, we would actually respond. And I can't overstate how much people don't expect that. <laughs> people are so shocked when they text us and we actually text them back. 
Um, and the other reason is that we are able to drive traffic back to the site with a personalized recommendation for a shoe that like we always have in stock, right? So this is something that people can go back to the site, they have a really specific personalized call to action, um, and they can hopefully get you know, their perfect pair. I will say we did a much more complex version of this for our first collection drop called the Treasured Trio, which was three shoes dropped all at once, where we did like an insane multi-step treasure hunt via text. Um, and as Kevin said, we had a pretty astonishing response rate. People were very engaged with that quiz and they actually shopped the collection when we dropped it. Um, so if anyone wants to talk about more complex back and forth quizzes, we can talk. Um, so once we saw that this basic quiz during the welcome journey worked, um, we decided to go a little bit further and experiment with concierge. And I will say, um, we were very skeptical of concierge at first, which I'm sure a lot of you are too. And that was in part because we really have just like the best customer service team in the biz. Um, they're amazing. They respond insanely fast. They give people such personalized and compassionate um, service. We never thought that attentive agents could give that kind of service to our customers. And we were very pleasantly surprised. Um, so the biggest change that we saw is that a lot of those frequently asked questions that we would get just like dozens and dozens of chats about how do the shoes fit? What are they made of? What's your return policy? Those questions could now be funneled to these attentive agents. They were out of our inbox and it meant that our amazing customer service team could spend their time and brain space dealing with the more complicated tickets that actually needed that like internal knowledge that only they have. So Attentive's help actually made our customer service team better at their jobs. They were able to be more efficient. Um, and the other really great part of this is that we were able to reach our customers where they already were, which is on their phone. We were able to answer their questions really, really fast and they could just get back to shopping. And something I'll say that's unique about our customers is that they work weird hours, <laughs> they work long shifts in the hospital. Um, so if you're at the nurse's station shopping for shoes at 2 a.m., concierge agents can help you when our customer service team can't. They don't work at 2 a.m., at least right now. Um, so the last thing I wanna note about concierge that I just love is that we've had some customers actually mention our concierge persona, Sam, by name. Uh, so you can see down at the bottom here in a customer satisfaction survey, Miranda said, great service. I would also like to rate Sam who originally helped me. I give Sam five stars. Um, <laughs> this message made my day when it came through. It's just, I mean, it's such a sweet message. Um, we have the best customers, but I think it really goes to show the quality of the concierge messaging and how much it really matched up to the rest of our team that Miranda thought that Sam was on staff at Clove. So um, for us, the key to succeeding with conversational so far in both automated quizzes and in concierge have been three key points. So the first one is to just show your customers that if they text you, you will text them back thoughtfully really early on. As I said, it's not assumed and it does what I say, um, I call it surprise and delight. It surprises and delights your customers, which should always be the goal. The second one is to collect those custom attributes as much as you can and then actually use them to segment and give those personalized recommendations. Um, and the last one, and this was the biggest one for us, is to experiment and in particular take and give feedback. So I think part of the reason concierge worked so well for us is because we got our amazing CX managers involved really early on, getting to know our concierge CSM, um, and giving that feedback in the platform and also via email constantly so that we could keep the quality really high. And I think it's part of the reason that we have so few escalations, why they can handle so many of the inquiries themselves. And now back to Kevin. Thanks, Esther. Now, one thing I do wanna call is the persona is super important. And I should have mentioned this in, in, when I was talking, but the persona is not one agent. The beauty of the persona is you can pick one name that represents your brand 
and we have a number of agents there actually servicing it from underneath, which means, yeah, Sam gets a lot of attention, which is awesome. Thanks for bringing that up, Esther. Uh, next, I want to bring up Kizzy from Igloo, who runs user experience. Who is, or Kizzy, excuse me. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'm super excited to be here. I, uh, I'm honestly a huge attentive fan. I think that's the reason that you wanted me to speak here. But um, uh, it, we have seen just amazing success with Igloo with Attentive, and then adding that layer of concierge just brought it to another level, um, which I'm excited to share some of those insights with you. All right, so I'll talk a little bit about Igloo. So I'm um, pretty sure a lot of you have heard about the brand. We have over 90% um, uh, brand uh, recognition between um, our, uh, the, the United States customer. Um, and uh, we've been around for 75 years. So we've been around for a really long time. Some of our products are made in USA. It's a very American brand. Um, but for 73 of those years, we've been like retail store only. So we've been in big box retailers. You know, you'll find Igloo in Walmart, Target, every single store that you go to, grocery store, gas station, you name it, you'll find Igloo. Um, but then it wasn't until about two years ago, three years ago, that we started the DTC channel, and that's where I came in. And um, from there, um, you know, our customers were really uh, used to that in-store experience, right? So the challenge was how do we bring now that digital experience? And I think that this is what, what Attentive really helped us with is kind of bringing that in-store experience, especially with concierge, where they can actually now, um, you know, ask the same questions that as if you're at Walmart shopping for a cooler, um, asking, you know, you know, is this the best cooler for the beach? Or, and, and especially with the challenges of the digital space where you can't really see the cooler, so you end up even having more questions around um, product features and so on. So this has been really helpful specifically for our um, needs there. Um, all right, so uh, we first launched, so for us, we, we went live with uh, SMS. That was new for us. We, it was doing awesome, and then, um, you know, Attentive came to us and said, we have this new product, it's called Cancierge, um, you want to try it out. And at first, I was like, okay, even SMS, honestly, in the beginning, I was like, who wants, you know, brands bugging you on your phone? And I'm like, I realize that a lot of people do. Um, so uh, uh, once I had that insight, I'm like, okay, so are they going to really have those conversations? Okay, let's start this, but let's start um, with a card abandonment. Um, and that's where we really started. That's where they're really, you know, have a high intent to purchase. So let's go for it. And it was huge. I mean, it didn't need much time. And we saw 333% post-reply conversion rate lift. Um, and we just got super excited about it. And um, after the test run, we are like, okay, let's expand that and see where else can we um, include concierge now to kind of help lift uh, sales through conversation. All right, so um, I think when you're thinking concierge, including in your journeys or your campaigns, I think it's important to be very strategic, like think of the customer journey and where they are in the funnel um, to make sure that you're, you're you know, having those conversations at the right time and, and uh, providing the insights that they need. Um, one of the things that, this is an example of one, one that we really thought through was high intent customers. So we, if they have engaged with us, clicked on um, an SMS, we know they're interested, but they're still not converting, then we bring concierge in. The other thing that was specific to our business is that uh, for the past year, we had five price increases. And we know that has become an issue with our customers. Um, so for our high intent customers, what we decided to do is we asked concierge, can we include the afterpay message in there? So, you know, we know that price might be an issue. They're not converting for some reason, so let's try to have that communicated. Oh, did you know that you can use afterpay for interest fee payments instead of all at once? Um, please let us know if you have any question, and, you know, that might help them um, convert. 
Um, so keys to success for us particularly, um, number one is personalize as much as you can. For Igloo, um, right now we have you know, Hello Kitty coolers on one side and then Grateful Dead coolers and Rolling Stones and NFL and Mickey and Minnie um, and, you know, high-end leather cooler for the ladies. And so, so it's just such a broad customer group that we have that segmentation and personalizing is very, very important to us. So understanding who those customers are and tailoring the message and in the right touch point, it's super important. Um, Number two is make every customer feel like a VIP. So I don't, how many of you guys sign up for SMS for brands? Can you give me an idea of how many brands do you follow? Maybe you can help me out with that. Um, do you subscribe to one? So many. Really? Like, because I have a marketplace, I like to see what other people are doing. I would say I get like 30 texts a week from some brands. Wow. That's awesome. That wasn't the answer I was expecting. Uh, but I'm, I'm betting you signed for more emails than SMS. Yes. yes. Um, I, so I, I think that when it comes to SMS, you know, it's a really special channel. Like if they actually went and want to listen to me on their phone, have that little bling bling and uh, hear from our brand, then um, that means they really like our brand and they're really like loyal fans of the brand. So. I need to treat them back like that, right? They're special for us. So giving them early access to sales and even giving a bonus. So for example, for holiday, we're going to give early access. Not only that, for that one day, every purchase they're going to have to get a free gift. So something that is not going to be communicated broadly and, and that will make them feel special. We also try to do that, you know, again, treating them even more special than our email is hitting them via SMS first for back in stock or for new sales for new product launches are super important for us. So that's top of mind for us. SMS customers are our VIP customers. And then choosing your touch points with intention. I think that's a, um, what we saw there with the high value, right? I think you need to go through your journey, see what you have in place and really analyze where does it make sense to bring the conversation. So high value, we know that they have high intent to purchase. You know, they might have a question. So let's, let's infuse concierge there. Um, back in stock, maybe the first, the first SMS is just a reminder. Look, this is back in stock. Two days later or whatever the time you feel is right, then you infuse concierge in and say, you haven't purchased yet. You know, can I answer any question? Can I help you out with? So it's that one-on-one -on -one service. It's bringing that uh, relationship, that human relationship to the brand, which I think it's super key nowadays, especially with the digital and everyone just like living in this robotic world. It's kind of nice to have that, that human touch there. Um, so that's all I had. so much, Kizzy. You're honestly one of my favorite stories about how you've infused concierge in your direct-to-consumer strategy as you've been doing for the last two years to transition. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we are going to go into Q&A. Uh, we'll take questions from the audience. But before we get started, I just want to point out that um, we have a special event offer. So if you sign up for, con if you're interested in signing up for a demo for concierge and you book that demo on or before 1014, we will send you a $50 gift card. So more money to spend on your SMS programs. <laughs> All right, um, is there a mic in the audience? Okay, so if you have a question, raise your hand and he will come to you. Oh, one over here, okay. <laughs> Earlier, I was like, if you talk today, you're gonna use a mic, right? <laughs> yes, I am. Um, my brain is still trying to decipher the question, but it's for you, Kizzy. Yes. Um, you talked a bit about your customers essentially being from many different backgrounds, just having like a very mix of essentially all of Earth. Um, how do you go about, seg like, I know we're talking about segmentation. I own an inclusive beauty retailer, so trying to get to that target customer is hard because when you're dealing with inclusion, you're dealing with the broad scheme. How does your company think about that in the way of, when you're coming up with that personalized conversation or even different offerings from the human mind, 
then too attentive or in data? How do you think about that? Sometimes I get very, we don't have that one customer because we, over, we, we service so many different types and the purpose of what we are doing is for it not to have that one customer. Yeah. I'm having challenges with that. Yeah, no, of course, that's a great question. So um, for us, there are several ways that we kind of work with the data. For example, for NFL, we actually had two giveaways already that kind of asked what teams they're, they're uh, rooting for. And we use that data when we come up with a new product. For example, we came up with a cool tune, which is the speaker's uh, cool tune that you saw that are NFL, but we only came in with 12 teams. So we're then targeting um, those groups. So that's one way. The other way that we use segmentation, we can actually pull um, the data from our emails. We work with Clavio now, and then, and then we can segment it that way. Have they clicked Hello Kitty emails? Have they clicked um, you know, uh, Hello Kitty SMS? And uh, using other product categories, too, that are similar, you know, and putting that in all one bucket. It's kind of like you have to kind of get a little bit creative with your data there. Have they browsed a certain collection um, and uh, viewed, you know, certain products and so on? So, okay. thank you. That helps yeah. a lot. Yeah, of course. <laughs> awesome. Um, we probably have time for one more question. Does anyone else have any burning? Oh, here we go. <laughs> awesome. Hey guys, uh, just want to say thank you for some amazing speak uh, speeches. Uh, my name is B, and I work at a marketing agency. Um, one thing that I love utilizing for SMS campaigns is also more engagement-driven style, and I love all the revenue-driven examples as well. But I was just curious for utilizing concierge sometimes for campaigns that are, you know, like wanting to get to know your customer. That's not always revenue-driven. Have you guys tried out any like, hey, reply an emoji with how you're feeling today, or? different types of engagement style like that into some of your strategies? I can talk a little bit about this. Um, we haven't done anything as general as that of, you know, how are you today, um, or just general get to know you questions. But I think we did something like that with the Treasure Trio treasure hunt. Um, it wasn't just a straight up answer a single question and then we send you a link to shop and goodbye forever. Um, it was a multi-step process that really honestly was meant to help our customers have fun. Like the point of it was for them to have fun and also to build hype. Um, we know that our customers love new colorway drops and this was a big one and we wanted to make sure it felt big. So really people could go through this quiz, answer a couple questions and it was okay if they um, never received, uh, they unsubscribed and never received a link to a product or never clicked on the link to the product. The point was for them to see that we were a company that wanted to engage um, in something fun with them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can add to that too. I actually, we're trying something out right now. We just went live with a BOGO on our site with uh, buy one, get 50% off our, our, all of our, across our collaboration. So we have all kinds of, like I mentioned, different collabs, but uh, we are sending the message there and we're saying reply back with an emoji. So. If it's um, a music emoji, it will be for Rolling Stones. The TV emoji will be for The Simpsons. Um, uh, what was the other one? The car one will be for NASCAR and so on. And it's just like, I guess, a fun way um, to engage with them. It, again, it all goes back to revenue. That's really what our focus is, especially now these times uh, ending the year. But um, I think gamifying in that way kind of helps keep that, you know, fun where we are focused on keeping the brand fun. So I don't have the results for that yet. So um, I'm curious to see what, what, what we'll get from it. But I think testing those things out um, and, you know, mixing it instead of just buy this, buy this, we came back with this, kind of being creative in this sense is a great, great way to go. All right, amazing. If you have more questions, unfortunately, that's all of our time. So feel free to catch us after. But thank you all for your time. And thank you. if you have any feedback, Thanks, please let us know. <laughs>